What's up, everybody? Welcome back to this week. Uh, hopefully, uh, you guys got all this information and found it very useful. But today, we will be talking a bit about rehabilitation for your lower back injury, uh, what you can do, what you can expect to see, uh, things like that. So what I'll do is I'll wait a second, kind of let everybody jump on or see if anybody will jump on. Uh, definitely ask some questions if you are available. If you're not available, definitely ask questions anyway because I will be able to go back into the comments, take a look at them, see if you have any questions, and figure out where your stucking or sticking points are, where you're stuck, where you're not getting around. So uh, that being said, uh, I also want to know what you guys have tried in the past for rehab what has worked for you, what has not worked for you, because sometimes what works for us uh, is really awesome, but sometimes we don't give rehabilitation enough time. And I think uh, in all these groups that I've been to and having my own group and having all my clients and patients, a lot of times people give up way too early, way too often, and as a result, we end up not doing rehab or we end up saying that rehab is not um, good. But on average, let's talk about rehab. On average, I believe it's, I think it's 87% of the population does not engage in a formal rehabilitation process, which is staggering, yet it's like 95% effective. So that's crazy to think that, like most people actually are not going to go through rehab pro pro uh, more than likely. But at the same time, more people will have success if they actually join a formal rehab program, which is unbelievable. Because if you think about that, like, why wouldn't you try the least invasive thing, which is like move? And I think most of the people don't do it is because it's hard, because they're going to have to sweat. They're going to have to take some time and there's no quick fix there. Uh, that's unfortunately true with a lot of people. So um, anyway. Rehabilitation, let's talk about it uh, because the whole point of rehabilitation is to get you strong and healthy and prevent risk of injury in the future. And it's really should be geared towards your goal because your, if your ultimate goal is to, uh, let's just say, lift some weight, lift, uh, lift your grandchild, maybe it's walk or hike, thank you for joining, uh, you know, do, that, then we have to do some rehab to get you there. And it has to be specific towards you, right? Towards you and your goal. It should not be specific, specific towards what I want. It should not be specific towards anybody else. Your rehabilitation should be really geared towards you. Now, that being said, most of us fall within a bell curve of like, hey, this is natural human movement and this is what it should look like. And that is may, that may be where you will be for a majority of time. So also, guys, if you have been part of this group, this group maybe or not, there is some information in the resource section, a free resource, uh, several resources, but one of them specifically are the phases of care. We'll talk about them because they do impact your rehab. Phase one is getting out of pain phase, right? Like if you're in pain, if your back hurts, your, no, your, your shoulder hurts, you have sciatica, the number one goal you should be doing is to reduce that pain, to reduce the amount of inflammation. And there are a lot of things that you can do to help reduce your inflammation. What's up, Henry, Eero? And we, we just need to do that to help us feel better at first. After phase one has achieved, uh, you wanna look at phase two, which is more of the corrective phase. That's where we're getting basic strength and conditioning in, basic movements down, and we're starting to really start start to strengthen us in a better situation, right, to correct the problem. And then finally, more than likely, we have uh, more of like the training phase. And that's where like you went from pain, now you're you're past the corrective care, you're strong enough, and now your, your weight training or your training and your rehab should start looking like you're lifting, right? So it should be bands and it should be weighted and you should start doing activities. Um, and, and that's where you will get to the performance level after that. But that's more, you know, for a long run. But most people fall within the pain phase and the corrective phase. 
I will say that in my opinion, that the majority of your problem and rehab should be in the corrective phase. Uh, the reason I say that is because most people suffer for pain too long and it's more than likely, not all the time, and I'm gonna be a generalist here and say that pain is fairly easy to get out of, but people just keep going, toggling back and forth, back and forth between pain, no pain, pain, no pain. But what they don't do in rehab is go from pain to corrective and learn how to correct this problem because most people are um, don't want to give that effort that I said before. And that's a really, really big issue is that that's why most people get out of pain and they come right back to it and they say, I've been suffering for this for five years, seven years, uh, six months, and they had this leg pain for so long. It's because you keep toggling back and forth. So most people's foundation will be built within the corrective phase. That is where you will strengthen yourself out, out to prevent that type of stuff. So uh, let's recap. We have the rehabilitation phase or the whole paradigm. We, more specifically, we have the relief of phase, the corrective phase, and the performance or training phase. In the relief phase, one of the most effective exercises that you can likely do is one, stop hurting yourself. I know it sounds very simple, very easy, but you cannot heal. I can give you the best exercises in the world. Somebody could tell you, you got to do this, you got to do that. But if you don't keep or stop irritating that injury, if you don't stop hurting yourself, you don't stop irritating that nerve, you keep picking at that scab, you're going to heal at a much slower rate, if not at all. Like you're not going to heal very well. So you have to first understand that if you don't stop the irritation, if you don't stop hurting yourself, whether you, wh whatever it is, whether it's stretching your hamstring, whether it's bending over and rounding your spine, whether it's the long car drives, whatever it may be, you're not going to heal very quickly or at all. So one of the, once you realize that, then you can start progressing to some exercises. So one of the best exercises that I like to recommend oftentimes, not all the time, is extension, right? So what we like to do is start extending. Most people, when they bend forward, they hurt themselves. It hurts more. And low back pain has that issue. So if you have that issue, try doing the opposite. That's also another key component. If you're hurt, if you're doing something over and over and over and expecting a different result, it's probably not going to happen either. But also at the same time, make sure you've tried it, right? You know, try to give it an honest effort. Say, hey, I actually tried this. Like, it didn't work. As long as you're honest with yourself and you say, yeah, I tried it. Um, you know, no harm, no foul. Sergio, welcome. So I think for, for just that, you know, one of the things you're going to want to do is extension-based exercises. That could be the modified cat camel that can be McKenzie extension or modified Cobra. That could be just slight extension into your spine, holding that for a second and alleviating your, your symptoms. That is what I call relief phase. Anything we can do or you can do to help you help yourself. Hopefully it's a little bit more movement based. Usually when you're in the re relief phase, there are things like modalities like ice or heat or uh, E-STEM and TENS units those types of modalities and things. I'm not against them, but I really would love my patients and my clients to start moving as fast as possible so that they don't decondition and so that they can get out of the corrective phase very quickly and into their performance or into their activities that they love to do. That is what I would love to see. However, most people, when they're in a lot of pain, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against it. It's just what you need to do is just get out of pain. So the extension-based exercise, there is also things like nerve flossing. That's a really large topic uh, to discuss uh, over this video conference right here or this, this quick one. But uh, nerve flossing, neuromobilization, you guys can look it up. You can Google it. You could check out my YouTube with it. There's a lot of inf information around that. And that is all geared towards helping you get out of pain. Uh, from that phase, the number one primary thing that you should be focusing on is really building your glutes, building your butt muscles, building your core. And when people talk about the core, um, what does it mean to you? Like, I would love to know what you guys think the core is. And if you um, have ever heard that, like people just think it's like just the abs, right? 
I think a lot of people just think it's the abs. But yeah, they're right. Absolutely, they are correct. But the abs at 360 degrees around, right? Just like that. And it's also your knees, all the way from your knees to your core. It's how you move as an entire individual. That's the core. That's the glutes. It's the hamstrings. It's the adductors, the, the abductors, the spine. It's everything. But the primary focus should really be about getting the glutes strong, around getting the butt strong, and around getting the abdominals really strong as well. Most of the time, people try to exercise their low back because they they hurt it and they think it's weak. Most of the time, it's actually pretty strong. Abs and other muscles connected to it. Absolutely, 100% correct. Uh, it really has to be the abs. Also, to, to be on a deeper note, uh, a lot of people think that the abs are just the rectus abdominis, the ones that are six pack. I can care less whether you're a professional athlete or just an average person like you and me. Like I, I don't have a six pack, like I, but I have a good core. It doesn't really matter. It matters how you as an individual, how your back pain functions, how it doesn't function, how your abs function. If you function well and don't have a six pack, high five. If you have a six pack and you have like terrible function, it doesn't really matter. It really matters what are the functions of those muscles and what can they do to help you. So that being said, uh, abs are really, really important. Abs are going to get you stronger, but sit-ups are not the way. Uh, anything that does hyperflexion of your spine, that rocking motion is not good. Because remember, we said during our relief phase, bending forward, touching our toes is going to hurt us, right? Doing these things are gonna hurt us. So if that's going to hurt us, then why would we do that? That's the same stuff as doing this. So things like planks, side planks, cat camel, um, bird dog, these are all great exercises. And guys, this stuff does save in the chat. It does save, and I will repost this also on my YouTube. So if you have this stuff like, you know, and you're like, wait, what did you say? I forgot. Just go back and, and take a look at it because this stuff is uh, really important. So he, I have a question. I have, let me read this out loud. So problem with the left glute max and my left TFL takes all the pressure on the front of the hip for getting my disc pathology from time being, which I'm getting treatment for. So yeah, that's a good question. How to activate your glute max very safely. The first easiest um, thanks for that question, by the way, and I appreciate you putting that out there because sometimes like the TFL, the TFL might feel like uh, the TFL is like right around here. A lot of people think like they'll have hip pain right around here, but sometimes it's nerve irritation and we call it sometimes pseudo or false TFL issues. So it may be that, but also the TFL might also be overworking because it do, it is a weak hip flexor, but it does also rotate the hip a little bit. So if our glutes are off, it may truly affect that area. So my first in, uh, inclination and thought process is like, forget the TFL, let's just strengthen the butt muscles because I like to address the elephant in the room. You'll hear me say that a million times. Let's go for the biggest, baddest problem first and then move from there, right? So from that point on, what we'll do is we, we can strengthen the glutes by uh, doing glute bridges, you know, have, I don't know, Henry, have, have you ever done any, um, any glute bridges or anything like that? Let me know. And I think that is a good start, you know, really burning out the butt muscles. You can alternate back and forth. Uh, there, there's a lot of good exercises that you can do to, to build the butt muscles. I really like that one as a corrective care to start. Yes, you have. Do you have good results with them? I'll let you hear so uh, because what you want to do is be able to turn them on often and easily uh, the glute bridges are really powerful and if you're able to do that or not do that um, then maybe the next exercise is putting oh, I have one of these one of these bands around your legs and almost like you know obviously the, we can just go like this pull it outwards and you could do some of the clamshells as well. So you're gonna have the glutes 
inside or your knees inside this and then do the glute bridge as well widening this and you can feel the tension that goes out through here so that's one thing you can do to help activate those glutes a little bit better uh, and do that you know i like to have what we call ground-based exercises first and that really means that you're working on the ground so that when you get up and you stand up you have gravity going through you if you have gravity going through you then that's great uh it just adds a lot more load and you might have to take some volume away meaning repetitions away so that's what what will make it kind of difficult sometimes is transitioning from ground to to the uh to standing exercises you want to be really proficient about on about activating the butt muscles and the core on the ground before you start really standing up let me see what he says but i've had stem cell injections prolotherapy and ligaments. So at this moment, you really can't do that. So one of the next best things is to start activating the core. But if you're, if you can't start doing that stuff because of your current condition, whether it's stem cells, whether you're in a lot of pain, then maybe you took a step back or two steps back. Maybe you didn't. Um, but either way, what we can also do is diaphragmatic breathing and which makes your walk even more protected. Yes. One of the things you do, you should do is try to walk often with low back pain and prolotherapy can help. Uh, also, I would ask yourself, like, you know, how's your diet? Like if sometimes when you're in rehab, it's, it's really difficult. We all know that, like we've all been injured and like sometimes it's really hard. So what you need to do is what other areas can you focus on if you can't do as much rehab as you like because you're in a lot of pain you've had some sort of procedure that doesn't allow you to do as much and there is a little waiting process how's your diet how's your meditation uh, i'm not saying you should do all that but i am saying that what is one other aspect you can do we all can breathe right we can all learn how to breathe better from our diaphragm the diaphragm is super important because it does control our core i teach every patient in my office and almost every client I work with about diaphragmatic breathing, the power, and almost every single time, like you can have them like bend forward, hurt their back, and then have them like do repetitions of proper breathing and, and stuff like that. And then they'll end up doing that. So Henry, also, if we can't do the glute bridges, maybe you're regressing back a little bit and that's okay. But maybe what we do is we put our, our legs in the band and we do like the Suzanne Summers clamshell type thing. And what we can do is we can start activating the glute muscles right away. So it's almost like if I was lying on my side and my legs would go, you know, in and out, in and out. And I'm, I apologize that I can't show this, uh, you know, through this video chat and like actually, you know, show how, how it works right this second. But the clamshells with the band might be might be a good option to do on both sides more particularly on the side that is more weak that would be a good side uh to try it. and i would recommend you try that uh if you can't progress to glute bridges with a band or something like that if that makes sense to you so um let's talk about and then training phase i, I don't like to talk about too much of the training phase because most people don't fall in that most people uh you know are, are really you know advanced and but the number one goal really guys is to get you back to your activity and once you are in pain uh it's hard to deal with it's hard to get out of so make sure you're doing the right stuff by first not not hurting yourself like you can't keep stretching the hamstring and having sciatica and expecting it to get better you can't keep bending forward and doing the problems that hurt you before it, like you just can't like you can't keep picking at that scap once you have dulled down the injury through modalities heat ice tens units proper rehabilitation extension extension exercise nerve flossing etc then you can move on to the corrective care that's where the primary people are that's where the foundation is built i always like to give that example as like how like if you everybody's been by like a, a building that's been grown like built and it takes such a long time for them to lay that foundation but then out of nowhere there's like six stories built up like whoa when did that get here right that's because they spend a ton of time building that foundation and you should spend a lot of time building that foundation as well and that happens a lot in the corrective care 
phase where we're laying on our back, we're doing the glute bridges, we're doing some banded rotation, we're doing some sort of hip flexor work, we're doing some other stuff. And that is really where you'll notice a big chunk of time will be spent. But that doesn't mean you can't get out of pain. And when you're out of pain, that doesn't mean you're out of the woods yet, just so you guys know, because I'm sure you've been out of pain and then gotten back into it very quickly after you like pick something up wrong or something like that. So focus on your abs, focus on the glutes. I don't really recommend stretching much because stretching doesn't fix anything. Mobility fixes things through strengthening. If you have strength, you will have mobility. If you have mobility, you have control of your body. If you have control, you have power over your body. You have decisions. Once you start realizing that you have the control by building strength, not stretching, that's when you'll be okay. That's when you'll start getting up pain per more permanently and for longer periods of time. Yes, you may have a flare up. That is so true. But the flare-ups will become less. They will become less intense, less severe, less frequent, or D all the above. And that is the goal, to get yourself out of pain. But I would also urge you guys to one last thing to walk away with is to really just focus on the end goal too. Write down what you ultimately would love to do if you had no fear of back pain and if you had no fear of sciatica. And I would love to hear what you guys would like to do. Like, would you like to hike Mount Everest, right? Would you like to run a marathon? Would you like to do, um, what would you like to do if you didn't have back pain? Um, I would really like to hear that. And walk, guys, if you can. I know you ha some of you out there have to walk less, but just walk. It's a whole body exercise. It's good for you. And it gets your body moving. It gets your discs moving. And it's just so good for you overall for longevity and health purposes. So that's a little bit about rehab. I know there's so much, I mean, I, I think you can just talk about this all day. So, but this is a little bit larger of a segment about rehab. Try your best guys to, um, to do what you can to get out of pain. Once you get out of pain, start building a little bit, start build a little bit of that foundation at a time. It doesn't happen overnight, but once you do that, you'll be less likely to go jump into that pain section and shoot for the stars guys like really shoot for the stars and what you really want to accomplish with your back pain um thanks again for stopping by uh if you have any questions you know uh for those people watching a recording leave a comment i will come back to it and take a look tag me in the group if you have questions i have plenty of resources i did make a uh, bunch of files that i said i shared before with regard to the relief of phase, the corrective phase, and the training phase or performance phase. So look at that, download that, save it to your computer. That's what it's there for. I created some of these documents straight up from scratch. Uh, no copying, pasting, they're all truly my work uh, for me to help you guys. So uh, I think that is it for today. Uh, let's see what else. I did miss some of the comments. Let me, let me do that. Um, Sorry, I missed those comments. I didn't see it scroll down. So more protected. Diet is huge. Yes. Diet is huge, guys. You know, for a dog side plank on the wall, then I'm spent. Yeah. I In my office, I do make sure that my patients and clients, like, are working hard. Like, you should be pretty much spent, but you should walk out of your rehab knowing one thing. That one thing is that you didn't hurt yourself further. So that's it, guys. Like, you should figure out your exercises. You should know that you're not hurting yourself. And you should walk away feeling tired but fresh, if that makes any sense. So that's your rehab. Uh, go give it a try. I would love you guys to literally try it every day for the next, like, seven days. It's like a little mini challenge between you and I. Try it for every, every day for one week. Next Friday, when we do the next live, how did it go? Let me know. And I want to know, did you get results in one week? And you'd be surprised how much results you can do if you do five days in a week, uh, just 15 minutes, 10 minutes. You can achieve a ton of uh, results. So thanks, guys. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. And uh, I appreciate you guys being here. And uh, thanks so much. Have a good one.